Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are here in Adobe Lightroom. We are gonna look at how to make any of your images look amazing, look professional, even if they're taken by phone. In fact, all the examples I have here are taken with the Mate 20 Pro and the P30 Pro. Some are taken in RAW and the others in JPEG. So we're gonna look at both and we can see how you can make your images look amazing. So we can start off by importing your image through library and importing it. I already have them set up here. So let's take a look at some of the before and afters, what we expect to achieve in this tutorial. So the first image right here, starting off very dull and boring in the after, beautifully colorful. Over here, same thing, start off very dull, boring looking image. These are taken in DNG, which is raw uh, in the Mate 20 Pro. And then we have this one right here. Same thing before and after, looks amazing. And last but not least, this image right here taken with a P30 Pro in JPEG actually. This is the before and what we expect to achieve right after. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So starting off, first we're gonna adjust the crop over here. I like to make it a bit smaller, stick it right about there. And let's change the aspect ratio to four or five, the Instagram preferred aspect ratio and we'll make it right about there. So that's perfect. Let's start off by adjusting the white balance. Uh, we, I liked it to be a bit more blue, maybe right about here. And then for the tint, which is green or purple, I'm gonna keep it as it is. I'm gonna take down the highlights to reveal some more details in the sky. And I'm gonna bump up a bit of the shadows to get more of these details in the shadow areas. Right about here would be good. I'm gonna hold down Alt on the keyboard and then hold and drag this up until I see some whites appear. Right about there is about, I think, good. And that pretty much brightens the white areas of the image. So if you go all the way, you see that area up there, the red, that is pure white. You can see it's blown out, but we don't want that. So we're gonna go back up to where we were, right about here. And I think that looks pretty good. Same thing for the blacks, hold down Alt, and then drag it the opposite direction. We're gonna crush down some of the blacks to give it some nice contrast. Right there, seems pretty good. Now we come down to clarity. I like to bump up the clarity a little bit. It gives it some nice detail. Uh, at about 30 seems good. Keep it at 30, and then vibrance. I'm gonna bump up the vibrance to 20, and then reduce the saturation to minus 20. I kind of like the look that this gives. Uh, of course, it's all personal preference, but this is what I like to achieve. Now we're gonna get most of our colors down here in the tone curve. We're gonna start with the reds. This right here is your shadow area, and this is your highlights. So if you're dragging a point right here, you're removing reds from the shadow and vice versa with also the highlight areas. So I'm gonna remove some right here, just about there. And then I'm gonna add some to the highlight, get some nice reds in the sky, not too much. We're gonna go to the green channel, do almost the same thing, not quite, just a tad bit. Remove a little bit from the shadow areas and we're gonna Add a tiny bit to the highlights. Now we go down to the blue channel. What I'm gonna do here is, I feel like it's too bluish in the shadow, so I'm gonna remove a little bit, not too much, just to get the uh, desired look that I want. And I am going to remove right about there, I think is good. Maybe adjust it a bit more, remove from the shadows. Possibly go back to the reds. Adjust it a bit more, you know, fine tweak it until you get the desired look that you want. I think right about there should be good. Not too much, not too little, just about right. Now before proceeding any further, I like to adjust the camera calibration. I'm gonna remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction. But down here in the cal camera calibration, I like to adjust it a little bit. So I usually take down the hues of the blue to about minus, 87 and then the reds to about plus 64 maybe 
I think right about there is good. So now I can do some further adjustments down here. Right about there looks pretty good. Maybe add some in the highlights. Not too much. And we can see it's starting to take shape. So what I'm going to do is come down to the HSL area, hue, saturation, luminance. I am going to keep the hue as it is for saturation. I'm going to bump up the red saturation a little bit to get some pop in the sky right about plus 36. I think right about there, 39 is good. Uh, for the orange and yellow, these are all mostly in the sky area, so I'm going to bump them up get some nice saturation in the sky while keeping the foreground and the cloud area all blue to get some nice color contrast and the yellows I'm gonna bump it up 31 also 32 is fine for luminance I'm going to brighten up some of the orange because it's in the sky area and obviously the sky is bright so we're gonna bump it up a tiny bit so it's not too dark and then the yellows Maybe we can, we'll leave that at zero. So coming down to the split toning, we can add specific colors to the highlights and the shadows area, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I am going to add some yellowish to the sky, right about 35. And then I am going to increase the saturation just to the desired result. I'm gonna keep it at 74, but I'm gonna bump down the balance. So this is about zero, which is like 50-50 highlight shadows. I'm gonna bring it down to about minus 54. I think that's a bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is take down some of the saturation. I think right about there is good. Let's keep it there. And for the shadows, I'm gonna make it 288 right in the bluish purple spectrum and just add a tiny bit. Now this is gonna create a big impact because you can see right here, the balance is more shifted towards the shadow area. So a tiny shift in the shadows is gonna create a bigger impact. Whereas in the highlights, it needs a lot more. So it really depends on the balance you create. Uh, I'm keeping this at right about five. I think that looks pretty good. And I'm starting to like it already. Maybe reduce this a tiny bit right about there looks good. And we will go down to add a tiny bit. I like to add a little bit of vignetting right about there. And I think that looks pretty good. That's it right there for the first image. We started with a very dull looking image and we brought it to life. So as we can see here, right here, this is a before what we started with. And then we brought it to life in the after. Quite amazing, considering this is straight out of a phone. No camera, no professional gear, just a smartphone. So it's really incredible what you can achieve with just a phone, using the right composition, great lighting, and a tiny bit of, well not tiny bit, a little bit of editing. So that's pretty awesome right here. Let's jump into our next example. Our next example right here is an image taken in JPEG. And we're gonna try to bring it back to life, make it look a little bit of something like this, which is quite amazing in my opinion. Uh, so without further ado, let's dive right in. It's taken at, well this was taken with a P30 Pro, five second exposure, F2.2 and ISO 1000. And I think it looks pretty stunning. This is the starting image we have right here. So let's get started. Now before starting, I'm gonna uh, begin this image when kind of in reverse, I'm gonna adjust the camera calibration as I did previously by adjusting it to minus 87 or 88 and then plus 64 right here. I prefer the colors that come out of it when adjusting it like this. And then we'll start off once again with the white balance. I'm gonna adjust the temp temperature a little bit at minus nine and the tint I'm going to shift it a bit to the purple side to create a little bit of balance actually to the green side maybe I prefer it to the green actually minus 15 that looks pretty good right there and for the uh, exposure area we're going to just bump up the shadows a little bit I'm not going to play too much with the highlights because as you can see it makes it pretty 
dull. There's a lot of highlights. I'm going to keep it as it is. Keep it nice and vibrant. And for the blacks, I'm just going to crush them a little bit. At right about minus... I think about minus 23 here. We can see the image starting to kind of crush down over here. That's probably because it's taken in JPEG and you can see it's not that high resolution. So we're still going to see what we can make out of it and I think it will still look pretty epic. So let's keep it at minus 23. For clarity, once again, I'm going to bump it up to plus 30. These parameters aren't really universal. I just adjust them based on the image. It's just a coincidence that they're kind of similar for the past two images that we did. And for vibrance, I'm going to only bump it up to about plus 20. I'm not going to reduce the saturation on this one. So moving on to the tone curve. Let's start with the red and adjust that. It's going to be about the same, similar to the, uh, the previous example. Just going to bring down the shadows and the reds a little bit and then add a bit to the highlights. It's going to look a bit weird at the beginning, but once you adjust all the curves, it starts to come back together. Same with the green, just a tad bit down here. You can see it starts to create a nice balance. And then just bring this back up to the middle. I'm starting to like how it's starting to look. And for the blues, I'm going to bring down some in the shadows. Not too much. Let's bring this back up. And let's add a bunch in the highlights. I like it to look a bit more blue. I'm really liking the way it's looking right now, so I'm going to keep it right about there. Might be a bit too greenish. So what I'm going to do is take a bit of the green out in the shadows. Yep. I think right about there. That looks pretty nice. I really like where it's going. So let's move down again to the HSL. Use, I'm going to keep them as they are. Bump up a bit of the saturations here of the oranges. Right about 33. Orange, red, and yellow. Create a nice balance because the image is more bluish, so bumping up the saturation of the reds kind of creates a nice balance here. For luminance, I'm going to keep that as it is. And then moving on to the split toning, we're going to be a little bit different here. We're going to shift the balance to the shadows. So it's going to create less of an impact on the shadows. I'm going to bring it up to 86. And I'm going to shift this to the blue. I just want a bit of uh, bluish hue in the shadows. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it down here to about 288. And then bump up the saturation just a tiny bit. About plus 5. So you can see before and after. It's very, very subtle. But it has a tiny bit of impact. If we can see... It, sorry, if we see we bring the balance back to 50 or 0, sorry, and then bring up the shadows, you can see it creates a bigger impact. But since we brought it up to 286, uh, it creates much less of an impact when we adjust the saturation. So we need to bring it up a lot more to create the same effect. I prefer to keep it here. And then moving down, you know, enable this and remove... And then just add a bit of vignetting, not too much. And I think this looks pretty great right here. We can see the before and after. We started off with this dull, boring looking image and we brought it to life. Even though it's a JPEG image, highly compressed, still looks amazing, still looks phenomenal. So that is the power of editing. Maybe we can add a little bit of crop just to adjust it. Four or five aspect ratio. Maybe correct it, straighten it up. And then hit enter. I think that looks pretty great. We can take this a step further, which I'm going to do. I'm going to open this in Photoshop. Add a copy with Lightroom adjustments and then render using Lightroom. So this is going to open the image in Photoshop. So now that we have it open in Photoshop, there is a plugin 
called Nick Collection. If we go down to filter, Nick Collection, you do have to install this. It is a third party plugin. It used to be free. I don't know if it still is, but if it's not, then you can buy it. It's really worth it. I highly recommend it. And we're gonna start off before going to Nick Collection, actually. We're gonna go to Camera Raw Filter. Open that up. It looks pretty identical to Lightroom, actually. Uh, and that's because it pretty much does the exact same thing, but I'm gonna take a graduated filter here We can see a lot of noise in the sky, and I don't like that. So what I'm gonna do is add a graduated filter down here and What I'm gonna do is kind of crush the blacks a little bit and extend it and I think that looks a lot better it made the sky a lot more black and it kind of got rid of the noise so if we took take a look at the before and after before after it really crushed the sky and it got rid of that noise and I'm just gonna keep that as it is hit OK and that looks way better already you've got the sky looking black less noise and then next thing we can do to even further enhance that go to filter Nick collection and define to this is simply gonna remove the noise from the image I leave it at default profile let it analyze do its thing and then just hit OK. And that is pretty much it right here. You can see the image looks a lot cleaner. We can see before. We can see the noise here before and after. It really got rid of that noise. Made the image look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. And this is pretty much it. Our final image from a JPEG dull looking image into this beautiful professional looking image. So even if you don't have a professional camera, you can still get some amazing photos from your phone. And that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.